He pulled off a, a great game plan and he had answers for everything that I tried to do. Um, it just wasn't, you know, it's not that I was surprised. I knew he was going to be able to do this and, and he, he pulled it off very well. We're going to let Harold uh, Spence go. Yeah, Spence is going to go. Mm -hmm. You had a question for Spence? Okay, okay. Yeah. this is the last question for Spence here, and then we're going to let him go. Hey, Errol, um, most people consider Terrence Crawford the best pound for pound fight in the world, and you the best welterweight in the world. And most people were clamoring to see that fight after a hell of a performance today. People are going to be clamoring for it even more. Are you willing to go to Terrence Crawford, a mere calm fight, to, to to put more pressure on Terrence Crawford to make that fight happen next? No. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can you talk? Can you talk about the legacy? The other the legacy that's at play in regards to if I if I want to protect the record and just fight you know contenders to make a quick paycheck and keep moving on and wrecking up wins, that's not going to be something to, to be remembered. You know, I don't, I don't want that. That's not something that I wanted. I made it a goal of mine after my return to fight the biggest fights, the biggest challenges, so that people can appreciate you know who I am as a fighter. And that's why I took on this fight. You know, like I said, I wanted to, you know, establish that legacy. I was, you know, trying to be great, and I think I, you know, I, I just, you know, feel that that's what a, a real champion needs to be doing. You know, and and you know, you know, the greatest fights available. There to be great. There to be great. Hey, Mikey. Hey, Mikey. Uh, you said that you saw something in Errol's face that in the Mark Peterson fight that led you to believe that you could beat him. Uh, was it different for you in the ring than what you thought that you saw? Did you see those same openings or was it, you know? Look, I, I've always said, you know, it's not that I saw something in his game plan or in his, you know, holes in his game or anything like that. I just felt that I was better than him in everything that he did. And I, I tried to make the adjustments and try to work the way I, I believed that I could. But he had an answer. Like I said, he had an answer to it too. Whenever I walked forward, box on the outside, which I knew he could box, but I thought I was going to be able to do it quicker, and he just, you know, had an answer, kept that distance. This height and reach, you know, the southwest stats, all these complicated things, I tried to make those adjustments, he just couldn't do it, you know, he showed me that he's a better fighter, you know, keeping that distance, I thought I was going to be able to, you know, maybe get on the inside at times. And then I tried to box on the outside a couple of times, maybe counter, I landed maybe one or two counters on it, but it wasn't enough. Uh, he kept coming and at his distance. He wasn't getting too close to where now he's vulnerable. He knew what he was doing. I tried, I just couldn't. You know, he's big and strong and kept coming with a lot of punches and he just didn't give me the time, you know. He had a good game plan. Right here. Hey, Congratulations on a great effort. Uh, strength and conditioning coach Mackie Shillstone once said when a fighter moves up in weight, he should stay there and not come back down. Do you think Go moving back down to lightweight to 135 would be the, would be in your best interest physically. Look, um, if I moved up in weight, I never ballooned up too heavy. I never went, in, you know, get, got too big with muscle mass or anything like that. We just added a little bit of muscle mass so that I could be at welterweight for this fight. But uh, I mean, even weighing in, I was at 45 and a half. You know, I, uh, I wasn't a big welterweight. You know, I, I feel like I can come back down to to the lower, lower divisions and, and perform great. And, and it wouldn't affect the I don't think it would affect. I don't think it would affect. I think uh, if I decided to come down to the lower weight class, I could affect, you know, I could uh, perform just as effectively. Mikey, quick question. Uh, was there any time during the fight as Errol was starting to really come on that you said to yourself, boy, I'm, I'm really not a welterweight? No, 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 no. It wasn't, it wasn't never that moment you know, or that thought. Um, he just had a lot of a lot of endurance and then he gave, you know, that strength, the size, obviously, you know, was, was, was giving me trouble. But uh, you know, I tried to I tried to box during those moments. You know, I tried to stay on the outside when he did come on the attack, and uh, I was blocking a lot. I was trying to block a lot of the punches, trying to wait for that opening. Uh, but it just wasn't there. Whenever I did let my hands go after he was letting his hands go, 
Um, he was dug down right underneath, and I was able to catch him. And he just, he just fought a very good fight. But I felt strong, I felt good, but I just couldn't pull it off. Right, Mikey. Eh, Eric Morales de Telemundo, antes de la pelea platicábamos y nos decías que en algún momento tus tu familiares, tu, tu entrenador, tu, te decían, es que no pelees contra él. Sí. En ese momento, y cuando estabas arriba del ring, ¿te pasó eso por la mente? ¿Te arrepientes de haber te subido al ring, de haber sacado una, una derrota? ¿Y qué te llevas de esa, de esa pelea? No, mira, no, no me arrepiento de nada, aunque pues por obvias razones muchos decían que no tomara esta pelea. Eh, pero el que pues no arriesga, no, no gana mucho, mucho, mucha gloria. Yo arriesgué para tratar de conseguir gloria, para tratar de dejar mi nombre, hacer historia y pues desafortunadamente no fue de mi, de mi lado, no fue de mi parte. Eh, en la pelea yo estaba pues dispuesto a, a pelear, a eso veníamos. Eh, en un momento mi hermano estaba preguntando que cómo me sentía, que si a lo mejor estaba bien que la parara porque no quería que verme golpeado. Un round que atacó bastante a los pens fue a recibir golpes y preguntó a mi hermano, oye, no quiero que recibas tantos golpes, la voy a parar. Y dije, no, 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 déjame, te enseño que todavía puedo, nomás no, no, me, no me la pares. Y peleé el siguiente round, hice un poquito mejor y me dejaron continuar mi pelea. Yo no, yo no quería que me pararan la pelea porque no, no estaba lastimado de esa manera, pero nunca corrió la, 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 la idea de que a lo mejor pues, tenía que haberles hecho caso. No, yo, yo estoy contento con que vinimos a hacer hacer lo que quería yo hacer, no se pudo, pero eh, hice todo de mi parte, peleé bien, peleé como, como un guerrero que soy, y me a enseñarles que yo traté de ganar, no se pudo, ¿no? Uh, Mikey, uh, you know me, I've been following you since you were 18-0, I've been writing uh, boxing for 40 years for Mexican newspapers, I know your brother, and every time I used to run into your brother in Juarez, I used to tell you, it's not let him fight at Walter. All due respect. <laughs> One of the reasons nobody mentions that, yeah, Earl, uh, Earl look good. Because he's a Walter way. You look, best not your weight, my opinion, you look sluggish because of the extra weight. That's very easy. Uh, you go back to 135, I used to tell you, Brother Robert, tell him to clean up 135. That the main reason that nobody mentions that. It looks like it's because you, you cannot carry that as per weight. My humble opinion. No, no gracias. Did I beg it? Any time for me? What is not doing it? Look, and, and I think, and I think uh, you know, his, his size also, you know, uh, imposing that size on me was tiring me out a little by little, and that's also why I felt, I felt a little sluggish at times. I love a fighter. Just, just, I love a fighter. Thank you. He's still one of my favorites. Um, sin lugar a dudas has ganado el respeto de todos los boxeadores previamente y aún ahorita más por completar las 12 rondas en esta pelea. Y habían dicho, y habían dicho que esta pelea iba a ser una victoria para ambos boxeadores, like a win-win situation. ¿Y tú qué opinas de eso? No, mira, este, yo estoy contento con, con el, la presentación que hice. Eh, pues intenté, hice todo lo posible que yo podía, pero no, no fue suficiente. Aunque no nos tocó llevarnos la victoria, en realidad pienso que el público puede agradecer que, que dimos una buena pelea. Uh, eh, una pelea que pues no, no sucede muy, muy seguido en el boxeo donde dos campeones invictos eh, de lo mejor libra por libra se enfrentan. No, no, no es muy, muy seguido, muy común que, que se puede lograr eso y yo pude ser parte de este evento. Es algo que pienso que el público a, a, a agradece y en realidad, pues mira, para, para un ligero que soy campeón ligero de China, Welter, intenté hacer cosas grandes, eh, no es fácil, no, no fue mi parte. What, around the 9th, 10th round, I, I feel like you started fighting him more on the inside. Why was that? Did you feel that you were having more success in there? Um, no, we were on the outside, like I said, a couple of rounds, and he was dictating that pace and then that, that aggression, you know, but good distance for him, and it was just giving me more trouble, and so we're, at times we tried to get on the inside a little bit. Um, maybe I was thinking maybe I could land a punch in between his combinations, and he was letting his hands go a lot to the body and, and the head, you know, he was mixing it up, but I still felt that maybe on the inside, catch him, you know, maybe I could catch him. I felt like I could have, you know, that opportunity. 
um, is he was, you know, getting a little, a little open at times. And I tried and I landed a couple shots, but it just wasn't enough. I, I felt like maybe if I stay on the inside, I would have a little more opportunity. I risk a lot more too. But I mean, if, if I don't, if I don't do that, then I have you know zero chance. So that's why we wanted to fight on the inside a little bit, and and, and I tried. It just couldn't do it. When your brother, uh, in between the rounds, said that hey, maybe you know we should get out of here. What? I guess speak about like the, the the fire it brought to you. I mean, you've never heard that before. You know, that's something very foreign in your corner. Well, it's foreign, and nothing like that had ever been uh, mentioned in my corner. Uh, but you know, they're, they're looking for the best. You know, you know, for the fighter, not just as family, but um, you know, my brother has a lot of experience, and I have a lot of experience in you know working in corners, and they always look out for their fighters' health and safety, and you know, so there was concern. You know, hey. You're getting hit a lot, you know, we want you getting hurt. And I told him, no, 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 let me show you that I can still do it. You know, I took a round off and then just, you know, let me show you I can come back. And I did, I, I came back the next round, trying to do a little bit better. It just wasn't enough. Last question. Last right question, Dan. Yeah. Last question, actually, it's for Robert. If you could speak to, uh, I, I heard what Mikey said about you in the corner and maybe the, the possibility of stopping the fight. Just in your, in your words, in your perspective, how close were you to stopping the fight and what were you seeing that, made you decide that maybe it was time to call it off? And what made you allow him to continue the fight? Because obviously you got the final call. I wasn't, I wasn't uh, that close to stopping it because it wasn't, you know, he didn't get dropped or get hurt where, where, uh, where it was, you know, where I, it was right for me to do it. It was more about just, you know, everyone just throwing, even though he, Mikey was blocking it, Mikey was not landing much, especially, I don't know, I don't know which round it was, but it was wrong where it, it was just too much, too much. My dad told us, what are you guys waiting for? Uh, my son also said, no, look, he's not hurt, because we're, we're talking in the corner. And my dad, my son says, he's not hurt, just let him go through the rounds. And when we talk to Mike, Mike says, no, let me, let me continue doing the rounds. He's not hurting me, he's hitting me, but, I, but I'm not being hurt. Let me just continue fin finishing, let me finish, you know, the five or 12 rounds. That's what we did, and, you know, like he says, you know, he, he was never hurt, he just, you know, Got hit at rounds where he was getting hit more than what we 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 we've ever seen, but not enough to where he got dropped or was really badly hurt. All right, thank you all, and give it up for the four division world champion. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button, and you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.